Hey man, today we have a very special guest to the Stoop Story podcast. Four national championships, over 50 players sent to the NFL to name a few. Super Bowl champion Jason Pierre-Paul, Levante David, um, just to name a few of them. Aaron Hosack, Southwind's very own NFL football player coached by the Coach Sims himself. Yeah, I'm so excited to have Coach Sims on. This is a guy who's come to us after 20 plus years of coaching to lead one of our fastest growing companies, You Move Me, and he has transformed what we believe is possible in the moving industry and business all together with utilizing his skill set of how you coach and how you lead and how those work together. And it doesn't matter if we're on a football field or we're in a conference room, this guy has got what it takes and is doing some incredible stuff here at Southwind. So excited to have him on the on the show. Hey, Coach Sims. Thank you, guys. I'm, I'm really excited about being on here. I've, I've watched your episodes. Um, I've learned from your episodes, and that, that's helped in the transition of going from being a coach to, to being in business. And uh, you know, so it's my pleasure and honor to be here. Yeah, so I, I, let's get started. And I think a couple things, you know, Coach does really well is lead people, develop a culture of high account- accountability is another thing. And I think win. He, he knows how to win really, really well. And so I'd love to hear from him about championship culture and, you know, what you've learned from the coaching realm that has carried over into the business realm that's helped you become successful. Well, if I was talking to coaches and they were listening to me, when when I was in the coaching world, that's all I knew. All right. So, um, you know, I, I learned from great people uh, everything I ever did in coaching. If, if you came in and said, why do you do this? I literally could direct, I learned that from Terry Nolan. I learned that from John Frangoulis. I learned that from Carl Bowser. Um, in in uh, coaching, I would steal from other coaches in, in, as a form of flattery. And th- I was really good at it going, okay, that'll help our program. That'll help our program. Even, even to the extent uh, how we would do squats in the weight room, I would learn that from a high school when I would go recruiting. I'd, I'd always be looking at different programs and how they did it. And that was the coaching world. And now that I'm in business, I've been learning from you guys. And I came into it open-minded and, and wanting to do well. When I first came into this, I'll be as honest as I can be with, with the listeners and, and you guys is every single day for about a month and a half, I, I sat in my car and before I came out, I said, I'm going to do a great job today because I don't want to let Aaron Hosack down. That was, that was my teammate. Okay. That was my family. And I was scared would I like it, but I knew I was going to do a good job. And so I came in and I would do a good job. And at the end of the day, I would leave and I was like, wow, I, I really enjoyed that. And I enjoyed it because I was learning stuff. There was times in football that it was very uh, Groundhog Day-ish. Is, you know, I could tell you what we did you know, on April 7th. I mean, we, our habits created our culture, so we were good because we were very consistent in what we did. But after 20 years, sometimes it got a little bit stale. And if I was asked why we were successful, there were times that we won three games and sometimes that we won championships. I wouldn't have been able to answer that before I got here. And now that I'm here, I could give you the answer, and it's alignment. The difference between a successful program and an unsuccessful program is alignment. Everywhere I've been, we did things that we felt would put us in a position to win. And and I promise you, every single day as a coach, I got up to help my students become college graduates, to become the best football players they could be, and to be better in life. The problem was the direction I was driving was the administration doing that and were the students doing that. And as a leader, it's not enough for you to want to do it. You have to figure out how to get everyone to want to do it. And when we were able to get everybody on the same page, we were successful because we are very hard to beat. But me is really easy to beat. Alignment. That's the one right there. Yep. Tell them about it. Man, it's the it's it's challenging, right? And once you can crack that code, everything becomes possible. So speaking of alignment, at one point you were aligned with Aaron Hosack, and that was why you were here. Um, why don't you share with the listeners 
what you're here for now and when that shift occurred? Well, you know, The, the, the thing about it is, is in, I, I'm going to be 49 this year, and, and we're all products of our environment. We, we, you know, uh, we speak English because we grew up in America. You know, that's why we speak English. So I am who I am because of the things that I've learned throughout my life. And the one thing that I, I hold really true is that actions speak louder than words. Uh, when we talk about where you learn things, I learned from Kenny Lawler that um, what you do speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you say. Okay, and that's a quote that he used to always, you know, pound in it, and, and I really believe that. And the truth of the matter is, is from the day I got here to this moment, the actions of Southwind have uh, superseded or extended past, I don't know the exact word I want to use, but just have have led to championships this is a championship culture this is a place that wins uh it, it, it and it's fun to be a part of and and you know i think in coaching all you really want to do is get up and, and work as a team and what really gets frustrating is when you get up and you try your absolute best to accomplish something and nobody's rowing the boat the same direction you are and and here why I enjoy it so much is because I feel like we're all rowing in the same direction. And uh, we're very, very aligned at Southwind, and, and, and we're trying to make sure we're aligned all the way to our, you know, to our farthest franchise. You know, the, the thing I talked to our group in, in Umumi about today was we all know the story of John F. Kennedy uh, visiting NASA, and he stopped and talked to the janitor and asked the janitor, what's your job here? So to put a man on the moon. Mm -hmm. That's how you put a man on the moon. Like, like that janitor understands that his role is so vital. It is so vital. And and in championship football programs, in championship basketball programs, and I believe in championship businesses, everybody understands and appreciates their role and feels valuable within the corporation. You know, I love that story about John F. Kennedy. And I was just reading recently about about that very thing but in a different context you know in this book and, I, and i'm not i can't recall which one it was because i'm in the middle of like three right now but um he was talking about john f kennedy and the purpose of putting a man on the moon do you realize what the purpose was it wasn't to go to the moon it was to show progress it was all about people in that day and age in 1960 feeling like we were doing something special we were showing progress. So we, you know what we're going to do? We're going to go to the moon, and we're going to do it first. Because somebody's going to move, somebody's showing progress, and it's going to be us. So I want you to relate that here. You know, what's the progress that you see in your current life? Because being a coach for 20-plus years, the goal was to win championships. So what's the goal now? Well, since I've gotten here, um, for about the first month and a half, I was trying to decide, is this the right thing? And in, in all honesty, I was probably rooting against it sometimes because <laughs> because here's the scary thing. You know, my wife really has – a quote from my wife is we should have done this 10 years ago. You know, and 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 so while the last 10 years have been wonderful, I, 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 I wouldn't have been at Garden City. I wouldn't have, you know, had the opportunity to go to Missouri Southern and, and put together a fantastic staff and, and, and a great team. You know, you look back and you're like, you know, was the last 10 years valuable you, but you sit there and go wow what if where would i be today if i would have made that choice then and so i've called multiple of my friends and coaches and talked to them about opportunities that we have and we've had some of my uh, former colleagues join us and and uh, the common trait i get when i call them is they don't they go i don't know if i know how to do anything else and that is really hard for athletes it's hard for them on a lot of levels because you 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 went through college probably because you were a good football player and then you went into the graduate assistant program and then you were the receiver coach and then you were the OC then you were the head coach and you've had success your whole life since you were five probably in athletics and to step out of your comfort zone and try something different is really really difficult and I've done that and 
it's not even comparable. The, 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 the life chances and the opportunities and, and the joy and, and, you know, financially, it's, 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 it's laughable, the comparisons. Um, the mood, you know, I was at every day in football is a competition. So every day you're, 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 you're attacking everything. Where we do it here too, um, but it's not a hundred meter dash. Okay, it, you have to be consistently consistent here. You have to always be good. You don't have to just be good on Saturday. You know, uh, in football we, we we talk all the time about the fact that you know you don't have to be the best team in the nation. You just have to be the best team on the field that day. You know, when you win a national championship, you go undefeated. But that doesn't mean you're the best team in the country every week. It just means you got to be one point better every week and figure out how to get that done. Well, in business, you have to be one point better every day. And so if you're really competitive and if you really want to educate and if you really want to lead, this is way more challenging because there's no off days. There's uh, one thing I would share with the the, the listeners that, that you said, Josh, and, and you know, you you really do treat people very well, and you really do give people um, tremendous opportunities. But you're not a pushover, and you're not a uh, a soft dude. Okay, there are times that you will push back, and and and, the, and you do it the right way. And 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 you challenged me one time, and I don't think you even know that you were challenged. It's just you challenged my values a little bit, and you, and you said. Being a business leader is way harder than being a football coach, and it's way harder than being a general. And, and, and you know, there's an arrogance in coaching. There's a pride in coaching. And when you said that, I'm like, man, what are you talking about? I'm like, how is this harder than winning a championship? How is this harder than being a general? And he goes, because people sign up for the military. People want to be a football coach. I go, you know, you said they don't want to come to work. They don't want to get paid $10 an hour. They don't want to pick up that box. He goes, but leading people and showing them that you're offering them something that through the work that they're doing, their lives can be better. That's way more impactful. And that's a, a tremendous job of leadership. And at the time, I don't know that I believe that, but I have seen that every day since I've been here. And we change people's lives. We we help people, you know, become what they want to become because we really go to work to go back to our families and, and, and help our families. And, and when you do that, you're, you're so much more impactful. And, and, and the truth of the matter is, is if you're a football coach and you do it because you want to help people, you know, I always loved junior college because I felt like they needed it the most. Well, these dudes don't even have a college. You know, these dudes don't have like, these people need it, and and this company has taken you know people that were working gas stations, has taken people that have been down on their luck, and and made them millionaires in less than four and five years, and that's literally incredible. And um, you know, but I would tell you that if I called a hundred coaches right now, they'd call me a liar because I'll be honest, I I even when I say it, I so you took a guy who worked at a gas station and now he's a millionaire well okay so you w once you know what what's it? no like you guys have consistently done it and you have a system that works and i feel like like it's a, a telemarketing pitch it's like it's like i'm lying but it's it's true and i'm i'm watching it happen in front of me uh and 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 i'm i'm really really fortunate to be a part of this and and uh you know the hardest thing is to make people believe what's truly happening yeah, you said something really cool. You know, in our mission statement at Southland, we believe that we can change the world. What's changed in you? You said we change people. What's changed in you since you've joined the team here at Southland? Well, I would tell you that 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 my stress level is less. Okay, um, you know the the uh, I've learned to be more effective. All right, um, the things that I've really learned the most, like educationally here, is the way we measure things, um, and and how to use the measurements as um, as the uh, indicator of, of success or failure versus 
you as the coach being the judge and the jury, you know, um, it's not, you know, I heard Urban Meyer, I still listen to coaches all the time and stuff, and Urban Meyer said that he wanted to have the greatest uh, the football team that finished the best. And he said the way he's done that is he's made it about the finish, not about the coaches, not about the players. He made it about the finish. Well, here we do a really good job of making it about the scorecard, and we measure things, and we measure everything, and we make it about the measurement, and 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 then we we run to the red, we run to the problems, and and you know you guys do a tremendous job of of identifying where where our shortcomings are, okay, as we call them, the opportunities, all right, and then offering it to the group to say, well, how do we fix this? And let let the ideas come about and then go, then let's do that. You know, like, why don't we just do that then? And so, so uh, you know, just as simple as, you know, we need people, okay? Well, we need people. How do we get people? Well, first, we want to keep the people we have. So how can we keep the people we have? Well, we make it a better environment. You know, we, we, we treat people better. We, we, we you know, create an environment where we can succeed and uh you know i just i just feel like that there's a lot of growth here and 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 and, and it's 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 true it's really happening yes i i appreciate all of you know you're telling the truth but giving compliments at the same time and but you said two things i want to well you said one thing that i think i have two questions about so first off the belief in the opportunity of what we're providing that's a real thing. Um, you know, people wouldn't believe, and this is kind of the second part, that the biggest problem that you have is you have too many customers. <laughs> is that uh, something that you realized or you thought was going to be the challenge in this in this space? Well, I will tell you a couple things. You, when we compare sports to business, that one of the things I really like about business is we say we're competitive in sports in sports so the coaches are competitive i might actually push back against that now i might say the most competitive people are in business because you only have one game to win a week in football where every single day there's there's trillions of dollars out there to go pick up and they're there for whoever wants them and in football you have one game a week or 10 games a year and this and that and you know and and I never thought, and 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 I, I swear we sound like a, a telemarketing deal because it, it, because you would never believe this. You'd watch it and you go, "Those guys are lying." There's more money out there than we can pick up right now. We literally have more jobs, more opportunities to get money than we can get right now. We just cannot fill our positions to go pick up the money. People are wanting our services, and we are saying no. And it's one of the most frustrating things I've ever dealt with in my life because <laughs> because I, I grew up with not a lot. I grew up in a family we didn't have. My mom's a hairdresser, and she's a hardworking person, and, 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 you know, we needed things. And the fact of the matter is, is there's more money out there than we can pick up right now. And we could literally hire – I mean, right now, um, you know, we hold the record, and I'm, and I'm proud of this, that, that, that we've set the record in the highest uh, revenue month in the history of You Move Me in the entire franchise system uh, of $780,000 that we made last month. Starting this month, we were over six hundred. We could project to easily hit $1.2 million this month, and we basically said, that's too much money. We can't. We can't do that much. We're not, we're going to pull back, and we're only going to do you know eight to nine hundred thousand dollars because if we if we try to do the one point two, our people just cannot physically work that much, and literally we're turning down three hundred thousand dollars a month right now, and 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 every day I'm trying to figure out because the the reality is I would tell you this is Josh is you know you own you know, 13 junk businesses and, you know, you, you know, you drive a beautiful car out there and you, you, you employ all these people and, and, you know, people go, well, what do you do? I pick up people's trash. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's what I do. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, is you make more than doctors and lawyers. And like, we literally can make millionaires here if people will come and help us move boxes. 
All, you know, that's the, the one of the things that blows my mind is our most successful businesses right now are junk businesses where they go and they pick up people's trash. Well, we should be the most successful business. We go into a nice house and we pick up a nice item and we take it and protect it and go put it where they want it. And they pay us a lot of money to do that. And we just can't get enough people to do it right now. And if we could get enough people, we could go from $1.2 million a month is, 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 I mean, I don't see why we couldn't do $12 million a month with 10 locations and the, the opportunities endless. And that's the hardest thing right now is, is the frustration that we could do more and we just literally can't go out there and get it. Yep. Biggest, most, most customers, excuse me, most companies, biggest problem is uh, like customer acquisition. How do I get more customers? Uh, we're like, dang, we got all these customers. How, how do we get, how do we, uh, get more people so we can serve our customers better? And, uh, that's where we are right now. You know, I, I love having coach on, on the team because I believe you're a realist. You see things and say things the way they are. I.e., we were just in a meeting and you told the dude, uh, dude has a broken bro. Did we do this? Or, you, you know, like every single day you say the truest stuff that I've, uh, you know, that just about anybody says. And but I I do hear you when you talk about what we're doing. If there's a bit of a lack of belief, you know, we our business was up over 100, 100 plus percent last last month in a pandemic and we continue to gain people but the uh, gain revenue but the reason is because of the great people like you and the other leaders and this is such an op uh, such an awesome opportunity to bring new people into the business and allow them to you know truly live out their dreams of changing people's lives i believe football coaches they love the sport right and they get into it because they love the sport and they end up changing people's lives through the sport uh, through the kids that they get to empower or the players they get to coach. So, Coach, we've said a lot of stuff about what you believe. You know, LeDrew, what do you believe to be true about about what we're building and how Coach fits into the, uh, oh, into man, the organization? Oh, man, without a doubt. What I believe is that – And just a side note, LeDrew was a teacher first before he came here. Teacher and education, coach. Ma uh, master's degree. Without a doubt. Uh, all of that stuff, and then he came to work at a junk company as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I go back to the days where Sims didn't like me, and he says, man, Josh is going to make me have a meeting every week with LeDrew, and I have, I have all these nudges and collisions. You know, what it boils down to is – it's really difficult to create that belief because people are too cool to get off the stoop. Mm, they're too they're too cool to believe in the opportunity that's actually real. They'd rather believe in something that's not to allow themselves mm, too to cool. minimize themselves, give themselves cosign their own ignorance and say, hey, I'm going to minimize myself by not believing. I'm just too cool. And I remember when I was on the stoop, man, I thought I was the coolest guy out. You know, I had the, <laughs> the best outfit. You know, I had my buddies with me to validate the coolness of it. Um, and I think that, you know, like that's the opportunity, right? And, and we've talked about that too cool to be rich is actually what I said to you. Yeah. Most people are. And, you know, what would you say to people listening that are trying to ultimately change their life and become who they wish they were? Before you answer that coach, I remember you saying, I call my friends and I tell them about this opportunity and he goes, and you said something about they're just being cache in coaching that even though the money's not very good and the the balance of, from a work life standpoint is not very good, the coolness is why people stay. Sure, absolutely. They they think being a football coach is cool. Now they won't say that, all right. But but the truth of the matter is is there's a lot of places that have football teams that aren't really trying to win. Now the coaches are, but the school is not giving those guys the true opportunity. And those guys want to be in the game, and they and they believe that they can win a championship. And this, but but they're not living in reality. Is is the fact is, you know, you're not in a position that you can really be successful. And that's what's fun about being here. And I'm not saying that football coaches should quit their job of football and go get another job in business. It's really like being a football coach. You know, when I was first hired at Fort Scott Community College. The first six months there were miserable, miserable. And they had only won 11 games in the previous five years. And I would tell you that after six months of working there, that I would have agreed with every coach that was there prior to me about why they lost. The school was not aligned 
on why football was important, why it was important to bring students there, graduate them, win a championship, do those things. Fortunately, one of the things that was different between me and my predecessors was my president changed. Okay. Now, the president that hired me was a very good man, and he had the foresight to hire me, but what it took to win a championship was not something he was willing to do at that school. And he didn't see it as a possibility at that school or for us to be successful there. It was just going to cost too much. All right. He leaves. A new president comes in, Dr. Clayton Tatro, and says a college is known for the buildings they build and how their president, their, how their football team does. So I want to help support you and give you what you need to be successful. And he gave me the opportunity, and then we were grew, and we ended up being a championship program. Here at Southwind, you give us the platform and the structure to be successful and to win championships. And that's what I would say to my friends in coaching, is are you someplace that has the opportunity to win? I coached against the University of Alabama. And it was one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen in my life. And when I was standing on the field, I looked up and they had this electronic banner going around. And it said, some people play football, we live it. And you need to understand that if you want to win a national championship at Division I football, you can't play it. You got to live it because Alabama's living it. All right. At Southwind, I really believe that we're winning because we're, we're living a culture here that leads to success. We're not just getting up and going to work. We're not clocking in and we're not clocking out. Like we really do feel like this thing is special. Aaron Hosack opened the opportunity for me. I've opened it up for Dan McKinney. I've opened it up for Bryce Sy. I've opened it up for Alec Weddick. I've opened it up for Tim Arno. And thankfully they heard me. Um, you know, I've never said this to you guys. I think almost every single day how I can get my wife to work here, okay? My wife is a doctor. She has her doctorate in education, and probably 80% of the employees make more money than her here. You know what my bet is? She's but. probably the better Sims. Let's oh. make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> you give me her number after no. this, I'll shoot her an email. And, and my, but my point is, is if she went out and you met her, She's got her doctorate. She works at a college. She runs a program that does really, really impactful things for people. But she's not paid what she's worth. And that's not her husband talking. That's her looking at her resume. And she would probably tell you she does it because she wants to help people. But I would tell you as an old cranky man <laughs> that money can make a bigger difference in people's lives. If, if she had the money, she could use the education she had to help way more students than she has. And so I just think that in Southwind, there's an opportunity here. And, you know, I love how we teach people. I love how we're competitive. I love how we work as a team. And it's just a real blessing to be here. And, you know, you know, I used to use a quote uh, with, with my players that Mark Twain said, when he, when he was 18 years old, his father knew nothing. When he was 24, his father knew everything in the world. My, how much my father learned in those six years. And the fact of what that quote means is the, the young man actually learned that himself, that his dad was always right. I will tell you in four months, that's what I've learned here is that there's even a better way to do things in a, in a more impactful way. And, and I'm just excited about the future, not with Southwind, but what we can do through Southwind to help the guys that, that I've always been proud of. You know, I, I always brag about having 56 guys in the NFL that made $221 million. Well, Aaron Hosack said to me, he goes, well, I got eight guys that came here and applied for $10 an hour jobs that are millionaires now. And he's done that through Southwind and the companies that you've grown and things like that. And, you know, I look forward to the day that we own 40 You Move Me franchises that we've developed and have leaders in place that, that came here to have a job as a mover, but they ended up becoming millionaires and, and lead people and, and do impactful things. I like how that sounds. Let's do it. Sounds good to me.
Hey, before we end this episode and get off the stoop, Coach Sims, you can think about it. Describe South Wind in one word or one phrase. What would you say? That's that's probably the toughest question you ask because I'm usually not a one-word guy. Um, but I would tell you this. It, one word? One word or, or no, a phrase. No, I'd say, well, if it's a phrase. If I was going to tell somebody, I'd go, it's real. It's real. Definitely Bef- before real. we le- leave, I... I just want everybody to know that when we had Coach Sims on here, it wasn't to plug Southwind. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That was not the – when we sat down and we talked about what we were we were going to talk about, that was not the topic. But I think we covered a lot of stuff. And one thing I do want you to take away from, if you're trying to win a championship, you're trying to win in business, or you're trying to win in life, alignment with your team and measuring what matters so you can stay aligned is essential. I agree. It's real, people. Get out the stoop. Yes, sir.